Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and as you can see, I'm hanging out in my test world, so it means it's time for another mod spotlight. Today is a brand new mod called Applied Energistics. What does Applied Energistics get you? It gets you something like this. A uh, crazy complex uh, build environment. It's a pretty high level, uh, almost I want to say like not necessarily end game, but definitely like, you know, a later game uh, mechanic that allows a lot of options for storage, uh, auto crafting, transport of items, and just uh, ma makes item storage very different from what you might be used to uh, in, in current uh, Minecraft and mods. So uh, it's, it's an expensive mod and it's, uh, you know, pretty awesome. So I need to get started showing you guys what Applied Energy logistics is all about and uh, I'm going to start off with the basics as usual and then move on to some more advanced designs and some of the cool things you can build with it. So without any further ado, let's go find a new place to start building and start showing you guys the Applied Energistics mod. Alright, let's go. Alright, the very first thing you're going to have to know about Applied Energistics is World Gen. As usual, uh, World Gen is uh, something that this mod adds. So when you break these items called quartz uh, blocks, you get uh, two types of things actually. Typically, you'll get quartz crystals and quartz dust. Uh, now, each of these items has a couple different uses. You don't always get one for one. Sometimes you get a little bit more quartz crystals. Sometimes you get less quartz dust. You know, it just so happens that I got uh, one of each this time around, but trust me when I say something. Sometimes you can get more or less. So there you go. I just got quartz from that last one there. Uh, now what is that used for? Well, quartz crystal uh, can be used to make a handful of tools. So you get some quartz shovels and hose and et cetera, et cetera, sword, some good stuff there. Now it also gives you access to a bunch of advanced technology items, which we're going to show uh, in just a moment here how all this cool stuff works. Now as for quartz dust, uh, you can use that for uh, quite a few other things. You can use it for some of the machines and uh, some of the quartz fiber cabling and specific which allows you to transport items you can also smelt it into silicon which is used for some of the more uh, advanced machines as well you can also uh, macerate you can get uh, four quartz dust per quartz crystal and if you get a uh, silk touch in there you get your quartz crystal uh, ore blocks uh, straight up you can get 10 quartz dust by macerating those so not bad at all uh, definitely a good option for you uh, there's also an item called a grinder uh, this guy right here quartz grindstone uh, which is kind of a manual type of thing. Uh, I think you have to right click on it if you get yourself a wooden crank. You can go ahead and stick that on there. Boom. And uh, throw some uh, quartz grind uh, into the grindstone there like that. And then just right click. And uh, a manual way to do this when it's really early on and you really need to get yourself some uh, dust, but you don't have uh, any automated way of doing it, like with a macerator or pulverizer. It's really not too bad. Eventually, you'll get your quartz dust. You can see here, we've already ground down a couple. Nice. All right, so lots of options for quartz dust and quartz crystal, and you're going to need a good amount of this stuff. I mean, like, you know, later on in the game, you're going to find a lot of uh, uses for quartz. All right, so what is the main thing this mod does? Well, basically at a high level, this mod can uh, compress down and store uh, items that are found in the world as data on uh, some individual disks. And the best way to demonstrate that to you guys is with an ME chest. Now the ME chest here can be placed in the world. And another item you're gonna need to go along with that chest is uh, the storage units. Now each storage unit has a different amount of uh, bytes. So it's amount that they can store and also the uh, different types of items that they can store. And I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a few of these uh, right here. These are the four uh, tiers of storage bytes, okay? So you can see we've got these four, and I'm going to explain exactly how this works. Now all you got to do is place your uh, chest in the world here, and if you try and right click on it, you'll see first off you can't access this chest unless you supply it power. And you might be saying to yourself, Dyer, it's just a chest. Why do I need to power it? Well, trust me, there's a good reason for it. Uh, so in order to power it, you can either use Minecraft jewels uh, in terms of redstone energy signals, or you can use uh, EU. So if we used ourselves like a bat box, or something that would work. I have any eye restricted just to show certain things right now, um, but you know, rest assured if you had industrial craft installed, you could use like IC2 or something along those lines. Now you'll note that the redstone energy cell drained just a little bit of Minecraft jewels, um, and uh, we now have access to open up the chest. Now if you try and place something in the chest, you'll see it's not working. Why is that? And I can't shift click either, can't put anything in there for a matter of fact. Well the reason for that is because we have to store the items in the ME chest on a data disk. So instead of it actually being stored in the chest, as a physical item, it's being stored like as data on a disk. 
okay? And that's these guys here, so you've got different amounts of storage. So for example, I can put the lowest tier of ME storage in there. Now this guy requires a bit of redstone, some uh, iron, and a little bit of gold and quartz. Lots of quartz. Uh, you can see this guy uh, comes from a basic processor, which is some gold and some of that silicon I told you guys about, and the quartz cutting knife, uh, which is uh, uses quartz and iron. And this is like a tool, that quartz cutting knife. Think of it like the uh, saw from uh, Red Power 2, for example. I think you can use it multiple times before it breaks down. So there's your uh, recipe right there. Now that we've placed the storage unit inside the chest, we can place items in the chest. And you might be saying to yourself, all right, why would I make this chest instead of just making a regular old wooden chest? That doesn't seem much better. I mean, it has a few more storage units, but I mean, dude, not that impressed yet, right? Well, don't worry. The cool part is just about to come up. So uh, let me get myself a couple more items here. So I've got a bunch more items in my inventory. I'm going to go ahead and open up this chest. Now let me show you guys real quick before I do that, that we are currently using just a little bit of power just to keep this chest going. So, uh, you know, it's not a lot of power, but it's definitely an amount that we need to be aware of, okay? So we can see that's happening right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some more cobblestone in here check this out. So instead of just having like lines and lines of cobble, the ME storage chest can store multiple stacks all in one slot. So you can see here we've got a bunch of cobble right here, 384 pieces of cobble in one spot. If I left click this cobble, it'll pull out a stack for me. And of course I can shift click it to pull a stack directly into my inventory. Nice. If we take a look at our storage unit, it's telling us that we've got one of 63 types and we've got 56 of 1024 bytes used. What does that mean? Well, basically this low tier storage unit can only store so many items on it before it gets it's filled up. Um, any tier storage can only store 63 different types of items. So uh, I can add all the cobblestone I want to this and it's only going to take up one of the 63 types. But as soon as I add another item to it, like the birch wood planks, now you can see I'm taking up two of 63 types. You know, this will be three and four of 63 types and five and six and seven. Now I can store all the redstone I want and we're still only storing up seven of the different types. So types means what different type of items you're storing. So, uh, you know, Basically, you can store a bunch of stuff in there. Now, with regards to the bytes used, this is basically your storage space. Once you run out of bytes used, you can't put any more items in this chest. So you can keep filling it up, but eventually you'll run out of space. Got it? Good. Now, the other thing is that these items are actually stored on this storage unit. So if I take the storage unit out, boom, all the items disappeared. That's because they're actually being stored on this little disk. If I go ahead and get myself another ME chest, so for example, uh, let's get ourselves one of these dudes and place this energy store, this uh, ME storage unit right in here. Oh look, all my items are still there. And I can pull out the cobble and the redstone and take this thing out again. Now don't go losing this thing because all your items will be gone, but keep in mind, uh, you know, it's a pretty neat way to transfer items from one chest to another. Uh, so all items are stored on this storage unit. And of course you can have larger storage units that can store more items, but remember you can only store 63 types of items at a time. Now another interesting block here that we get is called the ME preformatter, okay? This guy is crafted with a bit of iron and one of these things, a conversion matrix. It's one of those complicated uh, recipe items, okay? What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to place an item in here, one of these storage units, okay? And you can give it a name. So let's just call it redstone, okay? And uh, what you can do with that is you can preformat the disk to only store redstone. So all I have to do to do that is, uh, you know, go in here, put some redstone, and note that it didn't actually take a piece of redstone, even though I tried to put the whole stack in there it's only gonna uh, you know have like one of those ghost image type things and you can see there that it's only taken one so I'm gonna put redstone on here and if I wanted to I could even put uh, cobble okay and I'll put redstone and cobble sound cool format boom now if we mouse over this you can see that it has a name number one it tells you that it's redstone and cobble and it's pre-formatted Nice. If I go and place this thing right over here and place uh, this guy right there, I can put redstone in, no problem. I can put cobble in there, no problem, but I can't put anything else. It's not going to allow me to click items in here that aren't redstone and cobble. So that is an interesting way to make sure the right items get stored on the right storage units. Pretty cool, right? So that's the way you can use the preformatter to kind of determine what items are allowed to go on what chests, for example. Nice. Now that right there is pretty much the most basic way you could possibly uh, store items and interact with this mod. Now things start to get more complicated. And with that, we're going to have to introduce the ME controller. So let's go find some more of the ME blocks here. And what I'm looking for here is called the ME controller. You can see there's a lot of different blocks here. Uh, I think it's somewhere around, all right, let's just do this. ME controller, there we go. All right, this is a very important block because it allows you to start your very first 
ME network, all right? So it's, uh, I think ME stands for matter energy, or maybe it's mass energy, something along those lines. Yeah, definitely matter energy, all right? So uh, the ME network has started off with a controller. Now, any network is gonna need one controller and no more, no less. So you can't have an ME network without a controller, and you can't have multiple controllers in a network, otherwise they will start competing with each other and they'll complain quite a bit. All right, let's get ourselves another redstone energy cell. You know what, this one I'll do with a bad box, okay? We're gonna uh, go ahead and put actually an MFE right here, okay? And we'll put this guy right down, boom. And uh, I'll go ahead and put a uh, solar panel right on top. Now these guys do actually, once you start building bigger networks, require a lot of power. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in um, a uh, medium voltage storage unit. And you can see that the uh, MFE is throwing some power directly into the ME controller. Right now it's showing that it's online and it's currently using six energy units per tick. Now energy units is a specific type of power related to applied energistics. And it's really simple math to figure it out. Industrial craft power, each EU is worth two energy units and and for buildcraft power, each Minecraft jewel is worth five energy units. So basically, right now, we're using three EU per tick to power this controller, which is doing nothing. That's fine. It's about to do something pretty cool. All right, now let's check out some of the other ME stuff that we can get. Let's take a look at this stuff uh, called ME cabling. There's a bunch of it, as you can see. Uh, there's a bunch of different colors. Uh, for the most part, what you're just gonna look for is uh, called ME cable, okay? And I'm going to get one more item here called the ME access terminal. Now let's take a look at what this does. What you can do is run some cable from your controller straight into your guy right here. Notice that the icon on top turned to green. That's pretty neat, okay? Now the other thing that's gonna start happening is this uh, ME chest is gonna be powered by the ME controller. Look how the ME controller is now using seven energy units per tick. And it tells you there are six cables in the network and there's one ME chest. So I don't really need this guy anymore. So let's get rid of him. I'll even break him so he doesn't have any power left. And you'll see that this guy is still accessible. But this one uh, will be accessible for a short period of time. It has a little bit of an internal buffer, but eventually it'll lose power and die out. Now, the other thing we're gonna need here is an ME access terminal. Well, it really doesn't matter where I place this, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to place it down right here. Cool. Now, if we look at the interface, we're using eight energy units per tick. It basically costs a little bit of energy to add cable, very small amount. I think uh, something like 32 cable uses up one EU. So it's really small how much uh, you know cable uses. And then uh, each item in the um, interface here uses a little bit more. Different items use different amounts of power. Uh, it's not too crazy or complicated, uh, but basically, you know, there's... Uh, a little bit of power and also I want to take this real quick moment to mention that this mod is not balanced yet. Uh, it's a, it's version 8 right now. It's a very early release. Um, not version 8 like it's done, but version 8 like, you know, it's his 8th iteration. It's a, it's a pretty early mod. He basically got all the components working the way he wants, and the very next thing he's going to do is start working on power balance. So don't be surprised if these numbers change. In fact, I would heavily expect them to. Alright, so what happens now? So the controller is able to talk to the ME chest, and we've got the access terminal. What can the access terminal do? Boom, it can access that ME chest remotely. How cool is that? Now this might look familiar to you guys a little bit by way of logistics pipes, and you would not be surprised to find out that uh, you know logistics pipes had a little bit of influence in the ideas around this mod. It's a really cool system. So I can actually pull items in and out of that chest remotely using the ME access terminal between the controller and the access terminal. Nice. Now, uh, if I wanted to, uh, so for example, let's say I pull all my redstone out of here, right? You'll see the redstone is gone. Boom. It's no longer in there. But this chest has redstone, doesn't it? Oh, but it doesn't have any power. I can't access it to demonstrate it. Well, let's hook up an ME cable. Nice. There we go. Now the chest has power, and you can see that it's got some redstone in there. If we go down this way and take a look at this guy, we'll see that redstone is now accessible. Awesome. So you can connect all these guys up and you don't have to run cables directly from the controller to the chest. You can actually connect different blocks together and everything that's connected forms one giant network. Now, one thing you might have noticed about these two uh, lights on top here is uh, the different colors that they've got. So let me go real quick into that. Green means there's room for both items and types, okay? While the orange one says there's room for item for uh, more items, but there's no room for any more types. The reason for that is because we told this guy that he can only have redstone and cobble. Once I take the cobble out of here, um, you know, it might turn to green. Uh, maybe not. I thought it would. But basically what that means is that, um, you know, there's no more room for different types of items. Uh, there's really only like, um, oh, you know what? Yeah, because it's it's going to say like there's no more room for anything but just the cobble and the redstone. Okay, now red would mean there's no room for anything. And
And if it has no power at all, it'll, the lights will be off. Um, so that's the difference in colors. So yeah, that's how you can access remotely your storage using these different blocks. Now, of course, as I'm adding more things to this unit, it's taking up more and more energy, but we are not done. There's a lot more things to cover in this mod. So let's start taking a look at another nifty block that's pretty similar to the ME terminal, but a little different. And that block is the ME crafting terminal. Now I could set this right next to a cable or something, but I'm just going to place it right here next to this block to demonstrate that the uh, you know communication of this whole network can transfer directly from block to block. You don't have to have cables in between. So now we can see that we've got both the access terminal and the crafting terminal. What do you think the crafting terminal does? Well, it allows you to craft. Check this out. What we can do here is open up our ME terminal and we have access to all the items that are inside the chest. And of course we have this nifty little scroll bar. If I had more items in there, it would scroll. Uh, what you can do now is go ahead and pull items out and uh, create a pa pattern here, a crafting recipe, and then throw the item back in. And what this is gonna do is allow you to craft items using this pattern by pulling items out of the internal inventory here. So as I pull out chests, note that the amount of wooden planks that I have in here is going down. And eventually it's going to run out. So bump it up bump and then the very last one will pull out the pattern like so. Now it's pretty smart in that it said hey wait I see something in the or dictionary here that looks pretty similar to these wooden planks so why don't I let this guy keep crafting if he wants. Sure why not. I'm gonna pull all these guys out and then again the very last one boom. All right no more types of wood in here I guess I'll give up. And that is the ME crafting terminal. Now you'll also notice that uh, the top of this ME crafting terminal, as well as the uh, ME terminal up here, has a little slot you can type into. Well, this is pretty neat. Watch this. If I hit the letter L, it's only going to show me items with L in the name. So lapis lazuli and cobblestone. And if I put LA, it'll show me only the lapis lazuli blocks. Pretty cool, right? So I can only bring up uh, cobblestone if I want. Nice and easy. So you have a way to search throughout your items, both on the ME terminal, where you can pull items out of, and in the crafting terminal. How cool is that? And we're not even done with this thing yet. Now, I was just a moment ago talking about the different colors of cable. You can see there's several of them. Uh, I'm just going to show you here that um, black cable connects to black cable and white cable connects to white cable, but they won't connect to each other. They will connect to non-colored cable, of course. So, uh, you know, if we had non-colored cable here, it would look something like that as they were connected. How cool, right? So this is basically what the different colors of cabling do. It allows you to run and build some very tight and compact networks, which is really pretty useful. You should also note that any machines that connect to that cabling uh, are unique to that color network. So, uh, you know, if you have, for example, two networks very close to each other, um, you can, you know, have uh, two uh, chests next to each other that won't connect. If one's connected to a black and one's connected to a white, they kind of become, you know, unique to that network. So uh, the different colored cabling is useful for that. There's only one other type of cable, as far as I know, uh, called dark cable. And this stuff uh, is crafted using some of the normal ME cable and a lever and some redstone. By the way, ME cable, uh, it's not too hard to make. Uh, you can go ahead and just convert any color cable into the regular color. Um, the, the color of the cable is simply normal cable surrounded by some kind of dye. That gets you the blue cable, for example. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the uh, crafting recipe for this is a couple pieces of redstone with some of this quartz fiber. So you're going to need a lot of quartz dust again uh, to get this cabling. Now, what was I saying? Oh, right, the ME dark cable. This stuff is pretty neat, actually. Uh, what you can do is you can connect your dark cable. See how both the lights? turned off over here that means that these chests are now separated from the system in just a moment their internal storage power will die and I won't be able to access them anymore there we go one of them just happened already all right if I come over here to my uh, ME terminal you see I don't have access to those items anymore I got to keep the cable connected all I got to do is place down some dark cable here let's see do I have access to items nope all right hmm what can I do there well what do you think this is for it's pretty obvious that it had a lever in its recipe let's put that guy down and boom now, the lights are back on, the connector looks a little better, and we can access our items again. So that dark cable is basically a nice way of disconnecting parts of your network, especially when it's not needed, because as you build bigger networks, it's going to require more and more energy. So it might be really intelligent of you to cut down on power usage by clipping off power parts of your network when they're not needed. Pretty cool idea, right? So it went from 10 down to 8 just by clipping those guys off. Nice. You guys might have think I was just uh, demonstrating the ability to craft things when I made these chests, but no, I actually had a purpose for that. You can take items out of and put items into a network using a special type of item. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn this thing back on by just breaking this guy and just making it a normal cable again. Okay, and you'll see we've got a bunch of items inside this chest, right? Well, what if we wanted to get some of this stuff out of the network? Well, it's really not too hard. All you got to do, uh, oops, wrong cable there, 
is uh, get yourself some of this stuff. It's called the ME Export Bus, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's going to export items out of the network into an inventory, and it's eye-sided aware, so keep that in mind for just a moment. Now, in order to rotate it, you're gonna need a type of wrench. Uh, it does add its own type of wrench called the quartz wrench, but don't worry, you can use uh, just regular old Buildcraft wrench, and I'm pretty sure the prototype Omni wrench works. I don't know, we're about to find out if it does. Oh yeah, it does. Nice. Okay. Once you've got the export bus set up, notice that the chest here has nothing in it. Okay. Now our uh, chests here have some items, some like cobblestone and a couple of other stuff. The export bus needs to be told what type of item to export. It's required on the export bus. It's not going to just dump everything into the chest. That would be kind of uh, silly. So uh, let's say, for example, we want to drop cobblestone in there. Boom. Okay. Watch what happens. Oh, look, cobblestone slowly going into the chest. How cool, right? It's coming out of this semi chest and eventually it'll start coming out of this one and uh, it's just making its way into this chest and it's going to keep going until it fills up. So if this was a furnace for example it'd fill up a stack in the top slot of the furnace and it would eventually fill up and it'll stop exporting items. Nice. If we watch carefully we can see a little bit of an energy pulse going as items uh, you know pulse in there. Cool. Now if we wanted to we could switch this from single items to stack mode and then what it's going to do is quickly dump stacks of items in there. So it's going to burn through all the cobble in there and boom it's done. Not bad, right? Uh, you can also uh, do some crafting stuff, but we'll show you the crafting in a bit, okay? The other button here is the redstone mode. Right now, it's set to always active. You could also set it to active without a signal, so that if a signal was on, it would turn off. And then the opposite of that, of course, active with signal. So let's demonstrate that real quick, okay? I'm gonna pull all the uh, cobble out of here and put all the cobble back in. Okay, when this uh, export guy is in active with redstone, note that it's no longer dumping items into the chest. Cool, right? So we can check over here, we'll see that there's plenty of cobblestone in here. Nothing's happening to it. As soon as we apply a redstone signal, it's going to start going. And remember, I put it back in single mode. Okay, now the other mode here, I'm going to turn this off for a moment. You'll see it stopped. One more mode active once per pulse. What that's going to do is, note that there's 22 in there, every time it receives a pulse, boom, it's going to send one item in. But it's not going to keep going like it was before, it's going to wait for another pulse. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Nice. Always active, active without signal, which means it'll run until it receives a signal, and then it stops. Active with signal, which means it'll only run when it's got the redstone signal, and stop when it's off and in the pulse mode. Pretty cool, right? Now, of course, the opposite of this is the import bus. So let's take a look at that. What that's going to do is it's going to import items into the network. So let me break this guy off. We've got plenty of cobble in the chest here. I'm going to get the import bus like that. And uh, if you place them correctly, they will connect to the chest automatically. But here we go. Note that the import bus, without me doing anything, is already pulling cobblestone out. That's because the import bus, when not configured in any way, will automatically pull everything out of the adjacent chest. However, I can, of course, uh, tell it what to pull out. So I'll just say pull out redstone only. Then it's just going to pull out redstone and nothing more. It won't pull out the cobble anymore, but it will start pulling out redstone. Nice. And it also, of course, has the stack mode, which means it'll pull stacks out at a time. And it also has the uh, different redstone modes. So import imports item into the network, while export exports them out into the inventory. Cool. So what does this mean if we want to do something creative? I don't know. Let's get ourselves a uh, furnace uh, from Thermal Expansion. Ooh, this is going to be neat. And of course, we're going to need a nice redstone energy cell like that. Okay, so let's set these guys up. Just like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna set up the ME export bus right there like that. And note that it's connected to the top, which is the blue side, and that's the import, of course, right? Now I'm gonna make the left side of this, trust me when I do this, the non-colored side, okay? And that's gonna be important, okay? So let's see what happens. So I've got the uh, you know slot here, this guy in. I'm gonna just say, hey, cobblestone, you go in there. What's gonna happen is the powered furnace is gonna start dumping cobblestone into the top, which is where it accepts items, and it's gonna start automatically cooking it up to stone. And then I'm going to do the import bus, and I'm gonna put that guy right here. Okay, and let's wrench him over to the right position, and boom, it's gonna start pulling the cobblestone, or the smooth stone out. So it's automatically smelting for me. How cool is that? So all you gotta do in order to hook up a powered furnace here is the following. And look, all the smooth stone is going right into that ME chest. So it's pulling out cobble from the network, it's keeping a full stack in there at all times, and it's gonna smelt it automatically and then automatically dump it out. Awesome. So that's how the import and uh, export 
pipes work and how you can use them to do some really cool automation. For example, continuously smelting cobblestone into smooth stone. Awesome. All right, guys, so now we're getting a ton of smooth stone, right? What if we don't want that much smooth stone? What if we want to, like, you know, be a little bit mm, more conservative about how much smooth stone we're making? Well, let's take a look at this nifty block right here. It's called the ME Level Emitter. Oh, this is going to be cool. So what the ME Level Emitter does is it detects how many of a certain item are inside of a uh, network. So I can place the ME Level Emitter right here, for example. Okay, note that it's already got its redstone signal enabled. And over here, I'm going to put this guy on. Let's see, can I rotate this thing? There we go. Oh, it stopped. Why would it stop? Well, the powered furnace is set to uh, stop running when it receives a redstone signal, okay? Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab um, a bunch of smooth stone, and I'm going to tell it, um, let's say in this interface here, I'm going to put smooth stone, and I'm going to put 64, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to emit a redstone signal when there are 64 smooth stone in the network. So you can see that it's currently not emitting a redstone signal, so it's allowing the furnace to run. When we go ahead and put a stack of smooth stone in here, boom, the redstone signal turns on, turns off the furnace, and the furnace stops running. How cool is that? So we can go ahead and emit a redstone signal based on certain conditions like certain amount of items in there, different items, etc. Now, of course, as we're adding on to making this network more complicated, it's using more and more EU out of the system. Of course, I've got an MV solar array up here, so that's supplying a good amount. But I should also tell you guys that it uses certain amounts of energy every time certain transactions occur. So, example, uh, whenever this thing is pulling items in and out of the system, it's using a bit of power here. I can tell you guys that the exact amount of power is... Uh, when you add a single item to an inventory, it uses one unit, so therefore a stack of items uses 64 units of power. So for every stack of items that we transfer into this furnace, we're using 64 power units, which are equivalent to 32 EU. Now, like I said, those numbers might be balanced, so don't take them as solid just yet, but, you know, I, that's the basic way it works right now, and it gives you an idea of the fact that you do gain and lose, or you lose power every time you do any transactions, like putting items in and out of inventories and stuff like that. Now you might be saying to yourself, all right, Direwolf, this all sounds cool, but what if I don't want to put everything inside one of these chests? What if I want to access things uh, from something like the barrel from factorization? Well, I've got good news for you guys. It's definitely possible. Uh, all we got to do here is place down the barrel, which you can see is empty at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and put some torches in there. Why not? What we're going to need here is called the ME storage bus. And what that allows you to do is allows you to connect to and access barrels. So let's go ahead and place this guy down here. I'm thinking we're going to want the storage bus set up like that. Cool. Now, if the storage bus is attached to the um, barrel like that, I should be able to access the inventory from the ME terminal. Nice. And I can pull items out. So I grabbed half a stack of torches, for example. If we come over here, we should see that there's only half a stack remaining in the barrel. So the ME uh, storage bus, uh, like this guy right here, uh, it allows you to interface with an existing inventory like chests and iron chests and barrels and kind of anything else to immediately access what's inside. It does require an ME cable, some iron, and an ME interface, which is another one of those complicated blocks, which I haven't quite shown you guys just yet, but I'm about to get into. All right, guys, so I actually finished up this spotlight and realized it was an hour long. So I'm going to actually split this into a two-parter. I think I've overloaded your brains enough with this whole Applied Energistics mod. So what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here, but give you a sneak peek that coming up next episode, we're going to get into auto crafting and a couple more complicated and cool blocks. There's some really neat stuff coming up in part two of the Applied Energistics mod spotlight. So for now, Direwolf20 wrapping up on episode one of Applied Energistics. Hope you enjoyed checking it out. If you haven't thought that this mod is worth a download yet, just wait till next episode because it'll blow your mind. All right, lots of cool stuff coming up, guys. See you next time in part two, and take it easy.